Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to part five of What If. Um, what if Deku got stronger when injured? I'm not gonna drag out the intro too long. I'm just gonna say, make sure you like, subscribe. We're so close. We're like 330 subs away from 20,000 subscribers. You know how big of a milestone that is for me. I'll really appreciate it, guys, if you could just smash that subscribe button, comment on, turn on no notification bells. Join the Discord server, check out my thumbnail artist. And yeah, other than that, let's just jump straight into this. Last time we left off was a sports UA festival. Deku came first, Denki came second, and Bakugo came in third. Now you're thinking, how did Bakugo come in third? That's impossible. But he did, because I like Denki for this what if. But now, in this what if, we're going to go to their apprenticeships. A few weeks after the UA festival, Deku got his apprenticeships. But it was quite a weird option. It was an apprenticeship at UA. Deku went immediately went to Nezu to ask about it. And he says, well, you've shown strength on parts not superior to All Might. Keeping you in school would be just a waste. When you, when with all my activity going down, crime goes up, up. But if you came on the scene, crime, I'd be like, it wouldn't even be below 10%. I believe it would be below 5 So what I'm asking you, with UA signing you, sponsoring you of any amount of money you need, would you want to become a licensed hero as well as be able to keep your education full time? instead of an apprenticeship. Hearing this, Deku immediately agrees, as long as he can use the name Phoenix. And as you ask, why do you ask Fe want Phoenix? And he says, well, because no matter how much you beat me down, I always come back stronger. H hearing this, Nezu smiles and says, that's an amazing name. Well, this happens, everyone else gets their regular appren <clears throat> apprenticeship, except for Bakugo. Bakugo does an apprenticeship with All Might himself. But, Due to this, yeah. So Deku Bing's working as a hero. He keeps it small at first, keeping a mask on, as he doesn't want everyone to know his identity, as it appears family at risk. But he gets released on the scene as the new hero Phoenix. He immediately starts blitzing through all the villains. And he, the one he's on the hunt for mostly is Stain. As Stain caused an insane injury to Ida's older brother. But thankfully, thankfully, it missed his spine, so although he for the next few months he's gonna have trouble walking, a year max he'll be able to run and do his hero work as he did before. But he had a feeling that Ida was also hunting for him as well, so he always kept his phone ready. It was now a cold winter's night. Well, not it was a cold. It was the end of some end of winter, as the bree as the spring breeze was coming. Deku was jumping from roof to roof. He'd stopped five villains tonight already. In the night, Supreme City silent. Until, with his enhanced senses, he heard the, he smelt blood. And his phone rang with Ida's location, in the direction that he smelt blood. In a flash, Deku appeared above the spot, flying. And he looked down and he saw that Stain was about to behead Ida. He screamed, don't you dare, you bastard. And he dove down, smashing Stain's, smashing Stain's head into the concrete. He looked around and saw one of the other heroes seriously injured. And he told Ida to attend to that. He's going to deal with this. Ida at first said no, but Deku gave him a death stare, saying... He, uh, keep in mind that Ida didn't recognise Deku. And he pulled off his mask, showing his face, giving him a death stare, saying... You put yourself and others in danger for your grudge, for revenge. You're lucky I don't report this, Ida. Now do what you're told and help save a hero's life like you should. Seeing his Ida, seeing his face, Ida says, "You're already a pro hero." Is it? Never mind. You're right. I apologize. Biting his lip, Ida begins to attend to the other pro hero. 
he puts his mask back on and Stane starts laughing so you're the new hero on the scene Phoenix let's see if you're truly worthy of the rank named Phoenix of the rank of a pro hero Stane swings his blade at Deku and Deku barely moves out the way catching the blade himself and swings it back round at insane speeds and I mean with such force it caused the air blade to appear Stane dodges this and he's caught off guard how strong can this new hero be Deku appears in front of him and slashes Stane's stomach Stane winces but he manages to steal his sword back and he goes <laughs> you bastard let me show you my true power Stane licks his own blood and Deku can see Stane's rage bulge he's done a bit of research about the Stane hero killer his, this seems to be unknown to most, but his quirk is, if he digests your blood, he can paralyse you, but if he digests his own, his strength gets multiplied by every drop he takes. And he just took a mouthful, so it was at least 50 times stronger. But, thankfully, the multiplication he gets is the second he's paralysed, the next. So after this wears off, it'll only last about 2 minutes, but after it wears off, he'll be paralysed for 50 seconds. Stain rushes at Deku with his blade, and Deku moves again and again and boots him upwards, now activating one for all at 20%. This was more than enough. Stain gets sent flying through building after building while Deku flies towards him, picking him up by his throat, slamming him into the ground, chucking him in into the air, appearing above him, holding him in the head and uh, flying. And he says, Give me one good reason I shouldn't drop you while you stand. Stain goes, Ah, oh, because you're a hero. Deku gives him a blank look, saying, I'm a hero, so what? My job is to save citizens. You're lucky the only reason you don't die is because I believe there's some redemption in you. Seeing this stained life flash before his eyes, the abuse, the neglect, he could s all that seemed to go away when he looked into this boy's eyes. One thing you notice, he says, Stain laughs and says, you're a student at UA, aren't you? Deku drops Stain and backs up a bit, but catches him before he hits the ground. Stain goes, I can tell by your eyes, they're young. Deku laughs and takes off his mask and he says, they're saying, I'm gonna treat you the honour. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna end someone's career so as, as famous as the hero killer with had in my face. Stan laughs and says, Maybe you truly are the next all might. I recognise your face, maybe you are the next true hero. It'd be your honour to be die and to, uh, to be ended at your hand. Deku laughs and he puts his finger up and flicks. Stain gets hit by this air blast, but it doesn't mean he was caught off guard. Deku appears in front of him and Stain slices him. He thought that this would be enough to cut off Deku's arm, but it was only it made a deep cut, but not nowhere near to cut off his arms. So Deku had harder skin, harder muscles, so he jumps backwards, but Stain has his blood. Stain paralyzes Deku and he falls backwards on his back. Although Deku's paralyzed, he can still use his fly, but he's going to keep the secret. Stain begins walking towards him with spade ready, saying. You are strong. If I didn't get that lucky blow, I believe I would have lost tonight. To do you the honour, I'm going to end your life quick. Deku laughs and said, end my life, you won't get the chance. The same way if you watch Saito uh, One Punch Man, when Genos activates his booster to stand up well quick, Deku does it with his flight and he headbutts Stain. Now with that insane strength boost he got from his arm nearly being cut off, Stain gets sent flying backwards. Deku used him flight to manipulate his body like it was telekinesis. He starts moving his body about, saying it's not convenient, but I can still move. Stain is confused. He can clearly see that Deku is paralysed. But he can still move, and he says, oh, I get it, you can fly. So you're making your body float and using it. That's the most impressive thing I've seen in ages. Before they even got the chance to continue the fight, a fireball cut appears from behind him. Deku flies upwards, and it hits Stain directly. He sees Todoroki. Stain managed to cut this fire, this massive blast of fire with his blades, still with that strength boost, and he says, damn it, if I want to fight against this sprout, I'm going to need to. Before he can even finish his sentence, Deku sees a Nomu flying to a building, then another, then hundreds, if not thousands of Nomus flying in the sky. And he says, damn it, Stain, don't move. Stain laughs and says, move, I'm helping you. Stain drinks more of his blood. Deku recognises as his Stain's final move. His strength gets times by 10,000, but after which he won't be able to move for a month. Stain disappears in a flash, cut, decapitating one of the Nomus, and they begin working together. Deku by now had destroyed over 200 Nomus by the time Endeavor arrives. 
He just sees the bodies everywhere. He Deku had his mask broken at this rate and he says, that's the new hero Phoenix. Although he's not my level, I can see why everyone's calling him a future top 10. That's what Phoenix's nickname is right now, not that it's Dorma, the future top 10. But he also sees Stain. He's confused, but he's not gonna hurt someone who's trying to, he's not gonna destroy someone who's keeping the sitting and safe. He's just gonna watch him so he can get him before he gets away. Everyone begins taking down Nomu's, and unlike Canyon where this was a massive panic, not one individual in the public is hurt. With Deku there, he's blitzing through all the Nomu's, and this catches Shigaraki off guard. He had no clue how strong Deku had become. From that brat who could barely fight off one Nomu before, to be able to do this, what is he? Deku then activates one thought of 30%, and there was about 200 Nomu flying towards him. He f focuses all his strength into the massive punch. The shockwave was enough to obliterate all the Nomu that were left. Shigaraki begins running away, but not before Deku appears in front of him, snapping his arm and punch him in the throat. This destroys Shigaraki's vocal cords and he begins coughing up blood. So... The one thing Deku could recognise is kill, kill. But before Deku could finish the job, Kirigiri captures, manages to appear out of nowhere and save Shigaraki. Due to this, Deku makes a promise to himself. Next time, one second. Next time I see him, he's dead. And you're asking, due to one for all, I mean, all for one. Shigaraki knows Phoenix is true identity as Deku. <clears throat> a week goes past and thankfully, no one was hurt, not at all. And I'm gonna speed up the plot a bit guys, cause, uh, just cause why not? <laughs> what <Well, well>, so <laughs> One sec guys, I need to go listen to that. And Aizawa, so I'm back guys, sorry. And so they're in their classroom and Aizawa says to them, you were supposed to have your final entrance exam to gain your hero licenses. But that is being postponed. As we're now going on a training mission, we're gonna go to this forest where my friends, where my fellow colleagues work. And everyone screams, yes, class trip. And as such, they get, they go on their way. By the time they arrive there, Deku gets off the bus and he sees a small boy a small boy with a red hat and he goes over to him and shakes his hand. He punches Deku in the balls but Deku is not phased and he picks him up by his collar, not hurting him, and he picks him up with ease saying, Brat, you got balls in your mate. Train hard, maybe you can be the next top 10. He drops him. Kota sort of idolises Deku at this point. After his parents died, everyone stepped on eggshells or walked an eggshell around him. This kid had no care at all. Bakugo was dying of laughter after he watched that. After he watched that brat just punch Deku and walk off. And everyone else, all the girls there were blushing a bit saying he just got punched down there and you didn't feel like what kind of monster has he got? <laughs> anyway, they get introduced and they get told to explain their training. Their training is going to be get through this, fill it, to get through this forest easy. And they have six hours that they don't get food. They begin, they rush through the forest, and that's when all the monsters appear. Most of the class when they freaks out, except for Bakugo, Kirishima, Denki, and Deku. Bakugo with ease creates a massive explosion, absolutely obliterating one. And Deku looks at him and says, So that's what I might train you to do. Train your muscles and your bones so you can create bigger explosions without any drawback. Bakugo smiles and says, yeah, you figured it out. Kirishima comes in with a new technique. He moulded his hardness to create a blade. And he dived down, absolutely cut one of the other monsters and one of them monsters in half. Then he just shoots a massive ball of lightning at another. And they all laugh. <clears throat> Bakugo and Deku begin flying. But Denki says, you're not leaving me behind. He generates electricity to the point where it's levitating and off the ground. And Kirishima said, really? <clears throat> I'm gonna make a bit of an arse pool right now, but... Kirishima moulds the hardening on his back. And he's taking a deep breath. So all of a sudden, air begins propelling from his back like a jetpack. Deku's curious and he asks Kirishima and he's like, well... As long as I'm breathing, I can propel concentrate air on my back to fly. Although it does drain my stamina. They both, they all fly out to the ending with Deku getting there first. Bakugo getting their second, Denki third, 
and bought an Kirishima fourth. Or the teacher there caught off guard saying, you got here in a matter of 10 minutes, how? As I was especially saying, Denki Kirishima, you shouldn't be able to fly. They explained their training and they were so actually smiles. These are the first students they've, he's had in years that took this initiative on their own to improve their quirks in such a way. But anyway, they get their food of course, and they all go asleep. Until Deku's woken up by the smell of fire. He looks out his window to see Azawa fighting someone with blue flames. And seeing that Azawa's about to lose, he flies down and absolutely decapitates this person just to see their body clear in the clay. Azawa faints Deku as he weren't sure if he was going to get out of that unscathed. They then see the same blue fire appear all over the forest. All class 1A runs out to help until Deku hears that Ko has gone missing. He flies up to the sky and he looks around. His heart drops, he can see Kota, but he can see a big blonde, a big guy with blonde hair marching towards him. He can sense the killing intent. Deku flies at full speed, I'm telling you, and gets to just before he smashes Kota. Damn, beautiful! <laughs> he manages to get Kota out of the way just in time, and with pure rage, he spins around to him muscular and full right hooks him in the face. Break her muscular jaw and some of his teeth. He then gets Koa to safety, putting him to the back a bit. Still holding muscular by the throat and he choke slams him. Muscular tries giving Deku a lecture about how he's nothing compared to him, but Deku tightens his grip on Muscular's throat, attempting to crush his esophagus. Muscular spits out blood and activates his quirk just in time to smack Deku off him. He's holding his throat, he can barely get his words out properly with his throat being all bruised off and damaged, and he goes, You brat! I'm gonna tear you to shreds. Deku smirks at him and says, You're gonna tear me to shreds. I'm gonna rip you apart limb by limb. But first, you know your nails, they're gone. You see that other eye you have left? Gone. And then by the time you're begging for your life, I'm not gonna end your suffering, I'm gonna keep it going. That quirk seems to include muscle. What if I rip every little strand of muscle off your arm one by one, then maybe, just maybe, I'll let you die. He only just muscular the shivers. This kid's meant to be a hero. Why he's speaking worse than a villain does? Muscular laughs and says, you should come on my apprentice, kid. Deku, appear, Deku appears in front of him, kicking him hard in his nose, sending him flying backwards. Muscular amps up his quirk to fall and smashes the ground. It absolutely obliterates the mountain, but Deku catches Kota flying. He's holding Kota on one arm and continues fighting. Kota begins screaming, but he suddenly realises that Deku's actually holding his own with ease. With one hand, Deku's moving faster than Muscular can keep up with and hitting harder than Muscular can. And one punch, two punch, three punch, four. Muscular's, the actual Muscular Muscular's arms becoming visibly bruised, destroyed. And then Deku drops Kota after he breaks both of Muscular's kneecaps, his legs. Muscular lays there without being able to move. Deku rips through his muscle fibre and snaps his spine. Muscular is now paralysed. Deku with a big smirk on his face. Kota explained to him that Muscular killed his parents. Deku walks over to him and asks Kota if he wants to join. Deku grabs one muscle fibre and tears it. Muscular screams. Deku does it one by one. Kota walks over and does the same thing, but he stops after a few of them. Not being able to handle it is his stomach, but he felt like he just got revenge for his parents. And Deku kept his promise. One by one, he tore out of all of Muscular's muscle fibre until his arms were literally just flabby skin and bone. At this point, Muscular had passed out from sheer pain, and Deku trips up his empty body, his empty husk of a body, and dashes him across the world, <laughs> at least to the camp. He gets back to the camp, he sees everyone in tears, and they tell him, Bakugo got kidnapped. Hearing this, Deku snapped. He flew up into the sky and flew around the world three times in the span of a few seconds, till he could finally sense Bakugo. It was Shigar- <clears throat> We heard that, it's my mum. Shigaraki was giving Bakugo the lecture about becoming a villain, and Bakugo was just laughing at him, saying, you think I'm gonna be a villain? As Shigaraki releases Baku from his restraints, before Baku even gets to send an explosion off, Deku appears, kicking twice hard in the face and then flying, dodging Toga's knife slash and actually stabs her in the stomach. 
he grabs Shigaraki's arm and rips it out of his shoulder blade and then again, again rips it until it's fully off and he spins and slaps Shigaraki down. Kirigiri appears and Deku throws one punch destroying his main body and in the second one Kirigiri is dead. Deku is just in a blood rage. Bakugo calms him down and says calm down Deku, calm down we're heroes. Deku snaps out of it and seeing that Bakugo is okay he takes a deep breath and he says to all of them I'm going to allow you this once. Next time we meet you're dead. And Deku flies up with Bakugo returning to UA.